Are you thinking about taking advantage of this exceptional seller's market? Well, in today's video, I'm going to give you my top five tips to get you started and get your home ready to sell fast. Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Brad Belser, owner of Belser Realty Group, White Rock Realty, and I am a real estate agent here in DFW, and I make these videos to try to educate buyers and sellers before they get started on their journey of buying or selling a home, and, uh, and this really goes for anywhere in the country. I am located in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, so if you are local in the area and have questions or need help, feel free to reach out to me. There are links below. Uh, in which you can get in contact with me there. In today's video, we're going to talk about my top five tips for sellers to get their home ready to go on the market, sell fast, and make you the most money possible without you spending an arm and a leg. Let's just get right into it. Number one on the list, curb appeal. Your first impression of your home is going to be on the internet, most likely. And most of the time, those people are looking at your home, they're looking at the front of the house, and they're looking at it on their smartphone. So it's a, it's a smaller screen, it's an even smaller picture of the front of your home. We need to maximize the way the front of your home looks because that's the first impression. If the front of the house does not speak to the potential buyer, they may not even scroll to the next photo to see how beautiful the inside may be. So some things you can do, let's just freshen things up. Make sure the lawn is freshly cut. Make sure that the flower beds are in order. If you have hedges or bushes, make sure you trim those so that they look their best. It may be a good idea also to just add a couple of bags of mulch on top of the flower beds to brighten them up, uh, add that contrast, and then add some seasonal flowers. Not a bunch. I'm not talking about spending a bunch of money. Uh, these are things that most homeowners do in the spring and summer months anyways, but if you're getting ready to sell your home, no matter the time of the year, these are things that you should do right before your photographer is coming to take photos for the listing. Another good idea would be a fresh coat of paint on the front door. So. If the front door has some weather in the paint, if it's starting to crack or starting to peel, painting the front door is something that's uh, relatively inexpensive and easy to do for you at home as a DIY project. That paired up with a brand new welcome mat can really go a long way. Number two on the list is declutter, depersonalize, and clean. I know that sounds like three things because it really is, but they do really go well together. So we're getting ready to put the home on the market. The goal is to sell the house fast. What's the next thing you're going to do? You're going to move. So do yourself a solid and go ahead and start packing now while you're just getting ready to get the house on the market. Before it even happens, go ahead and start sorting through things in the house. If you going through cabinets, you can go through the kitchen, the bathrooms for sure. Go through those cabinets, find things, pull them out. If you can say, hey, I can live without this for a month or two, get it in a box, get it moved out clear out some of the stuff in the house that you're not going to need to use for the next month or two. This helps the home to feel more open and inviting, thus making it feel larger. Now let's talk about depersonalizing. It's a known fact that people have biases. Even if those biases are on a subconscious level and the person may not even be fully aware that they're there, they are. It's just the way that the human brain is wired. And so we wanna take the opportunity when we're getting the house prepped to go on the market, when we're go ahead and we're decluttering and we're gonna start packing, go ahead and take down those family photos just remove them down off the walls, go ahead and pack them away. Also, anything that would give away your political affiliations or your political beliefs, as well as religious beliefs, just go ahead and take those things down and box them up. That way, nothing happens to them during the showing process. We just want any prospective buyer to be able to walk through the home and be able to visualize them and their family living in that home, rather than getting sidetracked on a cute family photo. Now finally, let's talk about cleaning. I'm sure that your home, just like most others, are clean by many definitions. However, I will say, buyers walking through a home are gonna be extremely judgmental and make lots of assumptions based on the cleanliness of your home. For instance, if a buyer's walking through your home and finds a hole in the sheetrock where a doorknob hit it, or you know someone punched a hole in the wall and that wasn't fixed, they're automatically gonna assume that behind those walls or somewhere else in that home, there are larger problems that also have gone unfixed that they can't even see. They're just gonna assume that. Or if buyers are walking through the home and there's dust on top of furniture or on top of the ceiling fan blades where you don't even normally look, you don't even realize it's there. If a buyer sees that, they're gonna assume 
that the HVAC system has also not been maintained and cleaned and that there's that much dust inside of there also which is going to give them uh, concerns about the health of them and their family moving in. And th these may not be true, but these are the things that go through a buyer's mind often when they're walking through a home. What we don't want is for the buyers to walk through the home and start counting up these fictitious numbers in their head of things they're going to have to do to make repairs to the home before they can move in. Because what that's going to do, they're going to rack up these numbers. These numbers are highly inaccurate because most home buyers are not general contractors, they're not subcontractors, they're not even in the industry, but they watch HGTV and all these shows where they talk about home repairs and their budgets are so astronomical and plain out of touch with reality, but that's what they have to go off of. And they're going to start counting these figures up in their head. And what that's going to do is start decreasing the value from the house that's getting you a lower offer if you get one at all from these people. Now on the flip side of that coin, if a buyer walks into your home and it smells fresh, it smells clean, if the floor looks clean enough to eat off of, that buyer is going to also assume, but this time instead of assuming bad, they're going to assume, wow, this house is really well maintained, it's been really well taken care of, I just love it, it feels good, it feels clean, and these are the things that we want to leave a buyer feeling whenever they are done with the tour and move on. Because a lot of times they're going to go to another home afterwards and we want to make sure they remember this one. Because most people do not take the proper steps to make a good first impression with these home buyers as are walking into their home. And if you do, you're going to automatically give yourself a hell of an advantage compared to what most people are doing to get their homes ready to hit the market. And by making sure the house is clean, you're going to immediately put those buyers mind at ease and they're going to be able to focus on the home and imagine them and their family living in it. Number three, brighten it up. What do I mean by brighten it up? By having a ton of light inside the home, it's gonna help it to feel bigger. Now I also understand that in certain parts of the country, electricity can be very expensive, and depending on where you live and the time of day and things of that nature. Now for me in DFW, I will always advise my clients that while we're showing the home, just leave all the lights on. Luckily in our current market, when we're showing properties, it only is gonna be showing for a couple of days and then you can go back to business as usual, turn the lights off when you leave home. But while we're showing the home for those couple of days, just leave all the lights on. It makes a big difference when someone's walking into a home they've never been to before, they're not familiar with the layout, being able to walk in and immediately see everything with all the lights on. Not knowing where all the light switches are can be very confusing, um, so just leave the lights on. But I understand if you are in an area where electricity is very expensive, then just use your best judgment. Just leave a couple of lights on that way when they walk in, say it's in the evening hours where the sun's gone down, that they can at least navigate to where the light switches are to turn on all the lights themselves. Now while we're talking about light, let's talk about light bulbs. A huge pet peeve of mine is walking into a home and seeing light bulbs that are burnt out, or even in the photos. I can see photos in MLS every day. Light bulbs are burnt out, so there's one bulb, one bulb, a burnout bulb, another bulb. It just doesn't leave a good impression. That makes me think, and I'm a professional, I do this every day, I automatically know when I see a burnout light bulb, if they can't change a light bulb, there's lots of things that they're not doing in the house. Maybe some people are just too busy to take three turns of a light bulb and change it. Change the light bulbs that are burnt out. And another thing, in today's day and age, most light bulbs are LED nowadays. They're highly energy efficient, so they don't cost a lot of money to run, but what they also are is they give you color choices. Those are usually labeled on the packaging in the Kelvin rating. So you have those more blue toned lights, which are cooler, or you have some that are more yellow or orange, which is a warmer light color. And you have some in the middle that's similar to daylight, kind of right in between those two. I would recommend not getting the cooler lights unless your home is ultra modern. Then that kind of works in that instance. But if you put it in a, in a traditional home, you really want to get some of those warmer tones, either the, the natural neutral daylight tones or the warmer and make them all match. So just like having a light bulb that's burnt out, if you have three yellow light bulbs and one blue one, it also looks really, really bad. And I promise you every time a buyer walks into a house where it has missing light bulbs or the light bulbs are different colors, they are going to make a comment about it every single time and from that moment on for the rest of the showing, they are picking your house apart. I don't know what it is about light. People have a problem with it. So do yourself a favor and just change out the light bulbs that don't match. Change out the bulbs that are burnt out. You will 
definitely make a return on an investment on doing that simple task. Number four, deferred maintenance. Now deferred maintenance, these are things that homeowners should be doing on an ongoing basis throughout the time that they own their property. These are things like repairing sheetrock. If there's a hole in the wall, patch it. Um, caulk in the bathroom, so around the tubs and around the shower and the joints um, where different materials are meeting each other and you need to make a watertight seal, that caulk over time needs to be reapplied because it does separate. So just things like that, changing the light bulbs, again, back to the light bulbs. Um, doing things like that, you're supposed to do these things on an ongoing basis, but just like everybody, we get busy and sometimes things just get put off because it's not that big of a deal. Well, right now when we're getting ready to sell our house, it is that big of a deal and we wanna make sure we do it because it's easy, it's not gonna cost you money to do these things. These are things that anybody can do with a couple bucks spent at a home improvement store to get a tube of caulk or whatever the case is. And if you don't have time, at that point, it may be a good idea to kind of talk to a handyman. Your realtor should have a referral partner for you that he works with or she works with that uh, can help you out with simple uh, home repairs around the house. That is a good way to go. Someone, a handyman can come over there and knock out all your deferred maintenance in one afternoon for a very small amount of money. So just some good, good things to think about there. Taking care of your deferred maintenance now because if you don't, it's gonna come up in the inspection report and then you're just gonna be paying them at an inflated rate because you didn't wanna do it. All right guys, number five. Final tip for today, price your house competitively. I know you love your home and I know that you're partial to it and I know you've taken such good care of it and you've done some great home improvement projects and you may have done some updates throughout the house, but understand that the house is only worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. So do yourself a favor, get yourself a really great, exceptional real estate agent to partner with, have them be prepared to sell your home, allow them to do a market analysis for your area. They can show you all the numbers, you can go through the data together, they can walk you through, give you their price suggestion, but trust it to the professional who does this every day. There are many pricing strategies that real estate agents use to price properties and sell them. There's different strategies for different situations. So it really is important that you partner with a real estate agent that's local to you, that's an expert in your market that can get you the data, go through it with you and find a comfortable, smart place to list your home to get you the most money possible. And if you have any questions for me guys, I have a link in the description below where you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. That is free of charge. It does not cost anything to do that. I'd be happy to speak with anybody about anything real estate related. Happy to answer your questions anytime. If you are local in DFW and you have questions, you have the ability to meet with me in person. Uh, either come by my office or we can find somewhere uh, local to you or we can go and meet. I do cover all of the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. That includes suburbs surrounding as well. And I would be happy to meet with anybody if you have questions, even if you're not in our local market, if you have questions about real estate, schedule some time uh, where we can we can sit down and talk. That could be on the phone, it can be on a video call, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And also, I do partner with agents all across this country within my network that um, I can partner with to put you in contact if you are thinking about buying or selling a home anywhere in the United States in the near future get with me. I'll be happy to go over what your needs are and then pair you up with someone that's going to be able to best suit you and help you on your journey to either buying or selling real estate. All right, guys, thanks for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.